welcome to Pushing the Limits. Today I have a super interesting character for you that you're really going to enjoy his insights. I've got Jay Campbell. Jay, welcome to the show. Fabulous to have you. Lisa, thank you so much for having me. I am humbly honored and privileged to be here today. So let's rock this. Oh, this is going to be amazing. So um, you are the guru of, well, actually quite a lot of things, uh, peptides, uh, testosterone therapy, men's health, uh, women's health, uh, training. So there's a lot of rabbit holes that we can go down today. You're the <laughs> author of, I don't know how many books I've lost count. Um, you've <laughs> <laughs> metabolic blowtorch and testosterone and optimization and, uh, got all these fancy names, all your amazing books and you have an incredible podcast yourself. The, uh, a, a, a legend like you're 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 like me you're in your 50s uh, i'm 55 i think you're a little like a baby awesome. brother yeah i'll be thing. 53 i'll be 53 saturday uh, you're like a baby brother then you're still a little <laughs> exactly <right? Yep>. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> but <laughs> you're actually like you're ripped you're you're fit you're strong you're powerful you're running a big team you've done amazing things with your businesses supplements and all, all sorts of things so Jay, um, tell us how did you get here, and you know where did you come from, and were you always so amazing? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, I'm, again, I'm uh, humbly honored to be here and, and graced by all that amazing introduction. So thank you. Um, you know, as the oldest of nine kids, I was always kind of like a hard charger leader, uh, but I wasn't really truly walking this you know health optimization past path until you know uh, the quote unquote you know, how, depending on how you look at it, uh, the unfortunate at the moment, but obviously the very fortunate circumstance of getting kicked in the testicles while I was playing in a men's basketball league when I was 29. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then, you know, suffering um, classical hypogonadal symptoms uh, within six to seven, eight weeks later, and then just going to a, an insurance subrogated doctor who then recommended me to a world-renowned Harvard-educated uh, endocrinologist. And Again, you know, as I always say, there's no synchronous, there's no um, coincidence, there's only synchronicities in the universe. You know, he decided that he would run my labs and find out that I had, you know, 180 total testosterone levels and like no free testosterone levels. And he could wow. see that I was a pretty good athlete. Uh, I wasn't, I didn't have the physique that I have now, obviously using therapeutic testosterone and hormones and all the other things that I learned about, but um, I was still in good shape. And so he told me he could put me on testosterone and he would have me as his exact quote was right as rain, wow. you know, within eight to 10 weeks. And so eight to 10 weeks came back later and I felt literally like a God <laughs> and he wanted to take me off. And I was like, there's absolutely no way. I mean, why would I ever come You're off of this? So at that point, you know, I was about 30 and a half. Um, and I, the next 10 years, the next 10 to 12 years, I just became an insanely voracious student of everything that you could find. So this is going back to literally 2000. Mm -hmm. And again, of course, this is really the advent of the internet coming mm -hmm. online and information being crowdsourced and, coll and uh, collated. And I think, you know, I usually tell people by the time I was, you know, coming close to 40, 41, people would see me and they would, you know, marvel at my physical, uh, you know, impressive physical stature. And they would either say, you know, they would ask me, they're like, wow, you know, what do you do? Cause I, you know, at that time I wasn't in this realm I was a digital marketing um, sales guy and I was actually sending the corporate ladder as a, you know, highly paid or mm -hmm. accomplished wage slave. But, you know, when people would ask me, I would always tell them straight to their face, you know, I think, you know, by now I have no filter. And I would say <laughs> uh, I, I'm using therapeutic testosterone. And so that would always be met with like, Ooh, steroids or wow. Fascinating. Tell me more. Yeah, so I and was so like, I was in a place where, um, I wasn't coming off of this and I wanted to learn and learn and learn. And so when these people mm -hmm. uh, that would, you know, question me about like why I would do it, who were interested, um, eventually they won me over and they were like, you got to write a book. And so I got to a place where I was like, well, you know, I'm not a trained medical licensed person. I don't have any credentials. Let me ask people, you know, what would be the risk? Cause at that time, my wife, my current wife, Monica and I uh, had a a residential real estate company in Southern California. And it was modestly successful growing. It was going to get a lot more successful ultimately, but I didn't want to do anything to throw that off. And mm -hmm. so I thought like, well, if I write a book, um, you know, right now, yeah, you're gonna um, be in trouble, that could maybe? damage yeah. Yeah, my, my, you know, my private career. So anyway, I wrote a, 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 an email to Rick Collins, who's now a very close personal friend, you know, the, the, the famous 
uh, attorney in sports performance and steroids and sports and all that stuff. And I asked him, I said, what would happen if a non-medically licensed person, um, you know, wrote a book on therapeutic testosterone? And I, by the way, I also sent him a white paper, you know, because I wanted to put it out there and he had read it. He was an amazing guy. He, literally, I was a nobody at the time. And he responded to me in like a couple hours. Uh -huh. And he said, look, there's a risk. I'm not going to lie to you. If a senator gets a bug up their ass about you, then they do an investigation in you. And it's found out that this, that, or the other is going on, you know, who knows? And he's like, that's why guys pay me to keep them, you know, out of jail. So I was like, oh, I can't do this. There's too much risk. Yep. But I also sent the book or the white paper of the book to Nelson Virgil. And Nelson, you know, I always say standing on the shoulders of giants. I mean, Nelson had written the first book on therapeutic testosterone. It was Testosterone in a Man's Guide. And he was writing from an angle of like, he had HIV, which at the time was a death sentence. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't have the, 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 the therapeutics and the adjuvants that they have now for it. So those guys, if they had that as a diagnosis, were using therapeutic testosterone and anabolic steroids and growth hormone and pretty much anything they could get their hands on to survive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He also <laughs> wrote and written or was a co-author with another uh, guy, a doctor by the name of Michael Mooney, and they had written Built to Survive. So both of those books were kind of like the books that I had read in my search. And so when I sent the white paper to him, he didn't respond to me. I sent it the same time that I sent to him and Rick Collins. And then all of a sudden, four months later, out of the blue, in the middle of the night, he responded. And he was actually back in his native country of Venezuela, dealing with all the instability and the turbulence in, in Venezuela. But he said, I don't know who you are, but this is profound stuff. You have to publish this. Wow. Men deserve this information. Wow. And so he was like, call me. And he gave me his number. And I did. And, uh, you know, pretty much a year and a half later, the first book came out, which was the definitive TRT manual in the end of 2015. And he really helped me and coached me. Um, on writing the book and, you know, making it so that it was a lot less bro and much more clinical and acerbic. Yep. And, you know, <clears throat> truthfully to fast forward to now, um, since then I've written, as you said, a lot of books, seven, yeah. seven other books or eight total books. And uh, I've met amazing researchers, physicians, um, you know, people in this community, biohackers and whatnot. And um, I've just been really blessed. You know, obviously I'm a good communicator, um, and I was in the right place at the right time, you know, as testosterone and therapeutic, you know, adjuvants like peptides and, uh, growth hormone and hormones and all this stuff, you know, biohacking really just started taking off. So a lot of people look at me as kind of an OG biohacker, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I really was doing a lot of this stuff, testing on myself, doing a lot of meticulous research. And the only thing that we had back then, um, Lisa was, uh, underground forums where everybody was anonymous. Nobody yeah. had their name. Right. I always joke, like there's a lot of people and, and, and again, you know, not as many people are willing to be as authentic and transparent as I am, but there's a lot of people who are very famous now and their names are in the community who probably had a handle like my handle. And so when we get together, sometimes, you know, these are people are, <laughs> you find out who they are and we're like, are you so-and-so? <laughs> Because nobody ever wants to admit like who they were when we were talking on these underground forums, because that was all it was back then. But anyway, that was a long winded version of, of your question of like how I've gotten yeah. here. But um, I've always been very fascinated by the human physique or the human body. Yep. When I was and a little kid, I would look at. Yeah, I would look at younger, you know, I would look even when I was an athlete growing up, I played basketball, baseball and soccer. And I was very, very good at basketball and soccer. But uh, I would look at people black, green, yellow, purple, male, female. And I would just like look at their anatomy and their physiology. And I would be truly fascinated on why some people could like run really fast. And then other people could jump really high. And then you have like other people that just had a combination of like quick twitch where they could move fast and jump high. And so that stuff always fascinated me. And I would always be able to, and I don't have any idea why, but I would always be able to look at people and I could just tell you how explosive no they were. Wow. How wow. they could put masks on, you know, if they were skinny fat, you know, what needed to be done. And again, I knew this stuff before I knew what I'm talking about now with you today. Right. So it's like, yeah. sometimes you just have to think like, I think a lot of us are just really ancient souls. <laughs> been just, around you know, a while. <laughs> found and, you know, had many, many events where we've been in bodies many, many times and we just learn things. And then you just like have this a perception. It's like a perceptual acuity of like being able to observe things. Well, that, that, that's a that's a, a, a that was a roller coaster ride. That was really interesting. And you know what? I think 
uh, the 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 elephant in the room. There are so many men struggling with testosterone deficiencies, um, hormone deficiencies, and we're we're dealing with an obesity epidemic. I mean, um, I think it's what seventy percent of the American adults are overweight or obese. When it used yes. to be something like ten percent, you know, back at 30, 40 years ago. Check this statistic out, and I was just doing this in a presentation. You you, you nailed it, but it's worse because. Over the age of 40, it's 77% of wow. male and female adults are obese, not overweight, obese Wow, 77. by the BMI. And that's so think about how insane America. that is in the United States. Just to think, I mean, my wife and I talk about this all the time. I remember going to pools in Vegas or, you know, other destination places in the mid 2000s, the early to mid 2000s, and you barely saw fat people. Yeah. And now everywhere you go, people like us are mutants. People stare at fit people in airports and other locations because it's so rare to see people that are actually in shape. It's insane, yeah. really. You get these but extremes I, I, now. You get the super, well, super fit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't long ago where you saw the norm, especially in destination locations, were fit people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, when I, I mean, what the norm is not more than 20 years ago, because I remember going to pool parties, you know, in the early 2000s, um, and there were a lot of fit people. The yeah. average person going to a pool party in the 2000, you know, in two, say two, 2004 to 2007, or 2003 to 2008 was fit. And now you go to a pool party in Las Vegas or Florida or Monaco or Ibiza or any of these places, and almost everyone is fat. It's disgusting. And it's younger people, obviously. We're not talking people our age. We're talking people in their 20s and 30s. Yeah. And it's sad. Like it's it, 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 the thing is, it's a medical problem that we like. It well, is. it leads to medical problems, put it that way. It, it leads to. Um, your hormones going south for starters, diabetes, Alzheimer's, cancer, uh, oh, or cardiovascular risk, all of these things go up exponentially when you have excess um, body fat. Um, and understanding that hormone picture is an interesting one. So when you've got a lot of fat tissue, you're making a lot of more estrogens yes. um, for starters. And what happens to a man's testosterone if he's, you know, if he's obese? He has um, none. I mean, literally they have none. And that's what, you know, that's the, the conspiracy is, you know, and, and I have my tinfoil hat over there if you want me to put it on. But like <laughs> the conspiracy, I, mean, I really do, actually. I, the guy that owns tinfoil hat company in England is a really good friend of mine. But uh, the, the truth is, is that it's a combination of modernization and some form of a, you know, elite conspiracy. Because nowadays we can't really say it's not because we're looking around, right? And you have the whole trans movement. You have all the insanity. And look. I'm very open about this. I look at everything from a biological perspective and a nature perspective mm -hmm. and the trans phenomenon, however you look at it, and I have no hat in the ring. I don't care what people think or say, but at the end of the day, it's all based on an, a lack of testosterone in utero. So what is happening? And again, this is from modernization, right? Chemicals in the environment, plastics, fluoride in the water, birth control in the water supply, you know, mm -hmm. all these disrupting chemicals are in all the freshwater tributaries, aqueducts, streams, everywhere in every continent. Um, maybe not as much as where you guys are, but pretty much everywhere else. And the truth is, is that you just have the, the, the both male and female embryos do not get enough testosterone in utero. And, and again, that's, I always tell people, you know, cause they're like, dude, you're just a testosterone guy. Now you're talking about anthropology. I'm like, no, like the difference between men and women is the level of testosterone that they're exposed to in utero. Women have less and men have more. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the people coming out today, and I'm saying mostly now under 30, under 35, probably all of them, both men and women are physiologically malformed. Most men look like women, you know, they have a lot of re uh, regional like estrogenic fat, fat deposition in their hips and their shoulders. They have very, very thin waist. They're very, very compressed spinal concave. They're, they don't have mo strong mo mineral density. Mm -hmm. It's insane what is happening to the species. This is not a conspiracy theory. Go out anywhere in public in any westernized world and look around. And then on top of that, you have women who think they're men. 
I mean, it, it, the, the, there's like no estrogen because again, the, it, the same thing happens when you give a man less testosterone, they become more emasculated. And if you give a woman uh, more, it's the same thing. So it's like in utero, the ex the exposure to testosterone is so low that all of these kids are coming out and they're confused sexually. And obviously beyond that, you know, cause that's the anthropologic viewpoint. You also have physical issues mm -hmm. and that's what you're seeing. And again, look, you can talk. I was watching this the other day on Instagram. I saw this amazing video reel that somebody sent me about the NBA basketball players from 25 years ago and the NBA basketball players today. And look at this, how skinny these kids are. Yeah. They look yeah. like spinely skinny. I mean, it is insane what is happening. And again, it's all due to a lack of testosterone in utero. Yeah. And then add on that toxins and all the other crap and well, processed food. From and, that, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But that's what the result is, is that, you know, you've got 35 to 40 years now of birth control in the global water supply. And we know that wow. all of those wow. things are horrible. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Anthony J in his, you know, groundbreaking book, which I have over here somewhere in Estro Generation, you know, he told me this back in 2018. And again, the APA, the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States, were suppressing all this data. But you could put a female, I'm sorry, a male fish in any place in North America, and within one year, it, the, the male fish was female. Wow. So you From birth control. Like what was happening. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and, and all, again, it's wow. in the human population, too. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Why are yep. men so weak? Why yep. are men so estrogenized or emasculated or feminized? It's insane. Most the, men today can't make eye contact with another man, like under the age of 30. You have, you know, the whole incel movement where you've got literally 50 per, this is insane statistics. And, you know, this is from a doctor's lecture that I was just attending last week. 50%, you, you, you probably won't believe this. 50% of men under the age, I'm sorry, between the age of 20 and 30, in North America and Canada in 20, in 2022 and 2023 did not have sex one time. Wow. 50%. Between 20 and 30 years old. 20 and 30. They're not even having sex. But again, if they have no testosterone, they have no desire, they have no libido. It's not just desire and libido and sexual function. It's energy, right? Again, what makes a man masculine? Yeah, the energy of testosterone. So when you have none and you have no energy and you have no desire and no libido and no craving, why would you have sex? Mm. On top of that, you have the porn species. and video games that they're all addicted to because they can get that at instant gratification, you know, in the world that we live in now with the screens. So it's like, it's blown everything up. And, you know, a lot of doctors will talk about they see kids coming in or they don't even have money. These are kids living with their parents and their parents are saying, look, my son is emotionless. He has no motivation. He does nothing but sit in his house and play video games. And so these guys will take their lab panels. And I am not kidding you, Lisa. Like I've had some of my docs tell me that they've seen men with less than zero free testosterone, wow. less than zero. Well, if you have a 19 year old. You can't clinically prescribe them testosterone. You can give them like HCG or clomiphene and some of these other drugs to try to, you know, uh, stimulate FSH and LH, but it's a mess. I mean, yep. everything I've just told you, it is a mess in our society today, global society, at least in first world countries, probably not as bad in places that are less modernized, but all the modernized places are just decimated. Yeah. And then you've got, I mean, the, I know the story from the birth control side on what it's doing to women and, and how, it, you know, the, the the stuff that's coming out now. And I was on the pill for decades, for God's sake, yeah, and so I was, was unable wife. to have. I mean, all yeah. women were. Well, we were unable, I have been unable to have children. Um, I also, you know, was a crazy ass ultra endurance athlete who wrecked sure, themselves sure. hormonally as well from other yep. stupidities. Um, yep, everybody. That does that does that that gets yeah. like part of, part of the thing but that's part of your lesson or not lesson but that's what your journey was. yeah so you can teach people now not to do that right yeah but it, it also like you know wrecks your microbiome changes the perception of who you should be going out with you know you, the way you choose your mate there's just so many thyroid <laughs> you know like we could go on um what what the pill does and you know i'm not against the pill in the right place in the right time if but but with full consent not knowing like knowing what you're getting into um, and with testosterone, the other thing that, you know, 
uh, I've done, I've done a lot of work in, in brain um, rehabilitation and, and sure. uh, after brain injuries and things. And, uh, you know, within, a, a, I think it was 60% or so of people are going to have um, brain, uh, going to have hormonal issues after brain injury. Uh, and microbiome, uh, they're going to have leaky guts. I think it was 60% they're going to have leaky gut within within hours of a brain injury. And then the other thing was the high levels of uh, pituitary gland dysfunction, basically, that's not being picked up. And so there are a lot of our rugby players and things like that running around that have got problems in this area. You know, anyone who's in, that, in those contact sports or had concussions, yes. they need to check their hormone levels. Um, and then we've got women, you know, in their 30s already, their progesterone's dropping, things like that, and the anxiety and all of that that comes along with that. So so hormones are a huge thing. I'm on hormone replacement therapy and I have been for a few years. I, I'm, yep. a, I, I'm a genetics practitioner, so I know what my genes awesome. do with my hormones, right? Sure, and so sure, I, sure. I, I keep an eye on things because, you know, yeah, there, there's... Um, that you know the, that woman's health initiative that came out in the when was it the 80s which is the biggest yeah the whi destroyed oh, hormonal optimization for women it was horrific bad yeah. yeah it was absolutely yeah. horrific and we're still undoing it and when i'm talking with my clients and stuff they're like oh but the initiative said that it would cause cancer and it's like well hang on a minute that was all bullshit and that was a fraudulent study Literally. and yes. it was synthetic yes. horse urine, et cetera, et cetera. Here's exactly. the nuance of that conversation. However, there is, you know, certain genetic predispositions towards things and you need to know what you're sure. doing with them and you need to, you know, get in shape and all the rest of it to go along with that whole process. Right. And with, with men, so, so men who, are, and, I, and I've, you know, had clients and we, I can't prescribe hormones. So we have to get a doctor involved Sadly, um, we can't prescribe hormones, even though we know more about it than most of the doctors well, you do. Definitely yeah, do. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. know how to read the stuff at least, but you know, like when they go and then they get given something that's powerless, you know, like um, I remember, you know, even with my father, who's unfortunately passed away, but we he was getting um, testosterone uh, from other sources, shall we say, and then. I was worried about his liver and things like that. So I took him to the doctor and we got testosterone creams and so on. And it was just powerless. He started yeah. to lose weight. He started to decline yeah, and he was in his eighties. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Uh, yeah. that was actually the wrong thing to do. I didn't, you know, did not time I was trying to protect him. Um, right. But it wasn't strong enough. It wasn't most, wasn't powerful enough. Um, what are the best delivery methods for testosterone for men who are looking to get testosterone? And what should they be looking for in their labs? Yeah, for sure. And uh, just to go back to what you were saying about WHI, because I don't get a chance to talk about these kind of cool <laughs> things all the time. I mean, the WHI was the biggest disaster the in the history of the world. Yep. Yeah. It was the biggest it was the biggest disaster in the history of the world for women because as you just said most 60 year old women and older mm. do not think that testosterone optimization applies to them. They think that it will cause cancer, you know, again all the, the oh, fake on, yeah. WHI, you mm. know, Premarin and it, yeah. you know equine estradiol and all this nonsense. I mean it is it is so sad and so you have I mean, look, I, I I talk about this all the time with various physicians and stuff. I don't talk about it in my podcast as much as I would like to. Maybe you and I can talk about it deeper when you come on. But the reality is, is that there, that initiative destroyed more marriages than maybe anything ever previous to it. Because so many women could have literally maintained their sexual activity, maintained, you know, vaginal moistness. I mean, all these things that happen to women because their hormones are not optimized anymore mm -hmm. uh, to disastrous societal repercussions. I mean, I, I've had, who knows how many conversations with men uh, in their sixties and seventies who said, yeah, my wife couldn't have sex anymore. And it was like, what were we going to do? And, you know, it, it, it just, it creates so much, a lot of people obviously Lost. don't get then they start cheating and they have like arranged things and all this nonsense, but it's like, none of that would have had to happen if that didn't happen. So anyway, I wanted to say that to address your point, because it's still mind blowing how many aging women are still afraid of optimizing the hormones because of that bullshit. Yep, it's yep. mind blowing. Yep. It's literally mind blowing. There's so many of them and it's all in obviously first world countries, but to answer your question, um, there's really two deliveries systems. Um, there are literally right now 
This is this so is relevant. For testosterone. I, there's, 13, there's 13 accepted delivery systems by medicine, you know, depending on where you are globally. There's now four oral formulations for men. Every single one is completely and totally worthless. Right. Uh, we, we should talk about them though, because um, when I say worthless, I, I mean in relation to giving a man, getting a man to be where he's optimized. I don't mean taking a man who is 160 to 190 or 220 or whatever total testosterone and as a free testosterone of five to 10, uh -huh. you know, to 325 and their free testosterone to 15. Now in clinical space, they say that's good, right? Because we took them from sub uh, subclinical or deficient to a normal range, right? And again, and this is important for your listeners, the normal range, the, the standard mean deviation, so the top and the bottom of the ranges are being compressed. And the reason they say, and again, I could go get mm. my tinfoil hat, the reason they say they're being compressed is because it, it accounts for obesity. And right, as we know, the fatter you get, the more insulin mm. resistant, yep. the more metabolically deranged, the less you have hormonal machinery that is optimized or even functioning normally. Yep. And so these guys, again, the average doctor is just trying to take a guy who's 170 to 190 or even 225 to 350. But as you and I know, as you dealt with with your dad, somebody who's used to working with a thousand plus or 40 plus on free, who now is at 300 is still feeling like dog shit. Yeah. Yep. Like they have no energy. They don't feel good. They feel less than a man. I mean, it's horrible, but that's where the average person, if they're lucky enough to get to work with a physician, uh, you know, to hormonally optimize them. I, I never say the word replacement, even though a lot of people still say that, because why would you replace a hormone that is cessating as you age, right? It's about optimizing. So yeah, you're gonna yeah, have yeah, to get, yeah. Good point. I have to provide levels that get them to where they feel good. And, you know, the late Dr. John Crisler, who gave me a lot of information and taught me a lot of stuff uh, before he died in 2019, he always would say that there was a twofold goal of, of hormone optimization therapy. And this is for men and women. And that is happiness and balance. Yep. Do I feel good? Do I have, do, am I living in a state of joy? And do I have any side effects or, or uh, symptomology that was bad? And if you didn't, it didn't matter where your lab ranges were. And he would always you know, argue that some people could be at 500, and 25 and free and feel amazing. And other men would have to be double that range in total and double that range in free to feel amazing. So again, you can't look at laboratory measurement numbers and actually gauge whether or not that's effective. Gotcha. And, and, and yeah. it also applies to men, you know, who, who want to ask you or me or people like us, what's the perfect range, dude? Like, tell me what I need to be at. Like, how do I get my lab ranges there? It's like, no, dude, it doesn't mean anything. What matters is your symptoms and your, you know, your state of being. Again, do you feel good? And are you absent symptoms and side effects? So back to your original question, there's only two accepted uh, delivery systems that truly work in almost 99.9% .9 of men. And that's obviously injections and then the transcrotal. Which is a 200 milligrams yeah. per gram of cream. Uh, and it's, you know, there's three different, for, actually there's four formulations now because there's one called Atrivacious, but it's like HRT or, or um, TRT base. Uh, and it's basically like made out of yams, but it's a 200 milligram per gram uh, compounded cream. And it's placed on the male scrotum in the morning and sometimes at night, depending on that person, individual, how much they need to titrate. It's a four to six hour half-life. So it's a very, very fast active half-life. Um, but the, the peritoneum skin at the base of the scrotum is literally eight to 10 times more absorbable than any other place. And by the wow. way, there's like now nine uh, scientific studies on this, but that's where you place it. Now, I when I was coming up, I've been on th uh, therapeutic testosterone optimization now for close to 24 years. And I, at first, when I was experimenting with different um, delivery systems, I, you know, we, they would tell you to put the cream right here, to put the cream on the inner thighs. Yeah. All of those places are suboptimal from an absorption standpoint. And it right. wasn't until, you know, Dr. Keith Nichols and other people in the late uh, 2017, 2018, you know, went hardcore, you know, with everybody who was in the testosterone community telling people that, Hey man, you don't need to inject yourself. You don't, you know, cause it's invasive, right? You get scar tissue over time when you're constantly injecting yourself, but you can use it on your scrotum. And so, you know, I was against it cause I had been on injections for 17 years and I was like hardcore 
injection guy, but you know, he got me to switch. And ever since then, I've never gone back to injection. Wow. So would that um, apply one... to Jay, just uh, briefly for women who are taking sure. testosterone cream, which I do. And yep. um, I'm still in the, you know, when I get my ranges back, I'm still on the lower end of, uh, you, know, you know, I've doubled the cream and I've, you know, done the thing, but I'm putting it on the, the thighs. And, yep. you know, because women need testosterone too, ladies. Um, of this course. is really important for our sporting performance, our muscle mass, yes. our bone density, 100%. all of those things, energy, um, assertiveness, yes. all of that. So um, mine was in the gutter, you know, when I measured it a few years ago and I went, oh, you know, because <laughs> I've already had, yeah. Uh, yeah. From a genetics point of view, I was had a lot of testosterone. I was quite muscular build. I was quite, you know, there's varying degrees that we all have and sure. are born with. Um, and when you study genetics, the length of your femur actually, Jay, gives you a, a representation of how much testosterone in utero you um, That's right. received, right? Okay. That's right. And also the finger size. And yeah, all yeah, that. yeah. There's what a- are that? Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I had a fair amount in, in, in utero and I was athletic and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then, you know, in my late 40s, when I started testing for this stuff, I went, oh, shoot, um, in the gutter. But I still struggle with the cream, like, and that's all I can get here. Um, uh, for a woman, I'm talking about, and our, our, sure. our doses is much less than you guys, right? Than right. Listening right. To this. But it doesn't seem to be getting in properly, you know, is the sort of um, the, the upshot of it. Uh, should that be also in the genital area for women? Yes, it actually should. So, wow. so, so for, so for Wait, women. Something. Yeah. So for the, and, and I literally, my podcast I had this morning was with a gal from um, the UK. Um, amazing. She's got a spermidine supplement. We were talking about hormone optimization. So, oh yeah. Let me share. I, I, you know, I'll get back to the man stuff you know, about injections in a second, but to share with you, what's important is the problem that we have in medicine today is that because of the environment, you, you know, you're a perfect case of this. You, you're not getting the ranges you would like to get. You probably don't feel as well as you would like to feel. You're in a country that doesn't have the formulations in the place that you optimally need them. Mm. The same goes on in the United States. And the reason that, and what I mean by this is that even though we may have the correct formulations for men and women, the doctors are still governing their patient therapy by the standard mean deviation ranges and all of those ranges are a farce because they're not designed for men and women undergoing hormone optimization so you can't you extrapolate the data from quote unquote normal people well, and let's yeah, be honest normal aging who wants to do that, that? Healthy. right <laughs> so at the end of the day they're compressing our values when we're on these hormone optimization adjuvants into these ranges and the ranges have no bearing on a hormonally optimized man or woman. So the problem is, is when you talk to the smart doctors that do know how to do this, they still will say to you, Hey, Jay, Hey, Lisa, it's not your medical license. that's on the line. Yeah. You know, we're being governed and regulated by state medical licensing boards. And if they see our patients ranges too high, they can call us in and, you know, throw us up in front of the state medical licensing board. So, I mean, it's a, it's a real disaster because like, as I was saying with the other um, uh, lady that I was doing a podcast earlier this morning, um, to be, to you, the, the, the best doctors know that they have to work to the patient's interest, which is again, does the, does the patient feel good? Does the patient feel well? Does the patient feel like I'm optimal? You've got me optimized. And if they usually do, you got to push the levels way higher. So why I'm saying this to you is you need your levels higher. Mm. You need a higher dose. You need higher levels. It's not, it's not a matter of like where the numbers fall on the paper of the, the laboratory evaluation. It's again, do you feel good? And is there an absence of symptoms and side effects? And if that's the case, it doesn't matter where your levels are on the piece of paper. But the problem is, is that doctors, it, to them, it does mm. because they're worried about being and I audited. Get Yep. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Especially that. if your numbers look so high. So you really have to find a doctor. And obviously where you're at, there aren't any. Yes. Yeah, no, but there aren't any. <laughs> that really understands the nuance of this. And they, and I always tell people this, especially in the States, and 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 thankfully now a little bit more is coming into Canada. But like if your doctor has not been optimizing hormones for 10 years, find another doctor. Yeah. Because they don't have the easy. experience. Yeah, they yep. do not have the knowledge or the experience to do this. But look, I'm here to tell you, 
it is easy for men. It's not as easy for women. There is no cookie cutter templatized versions because women are so N of one. But um, wife, my wife is now using an oral formulation. Oh, wow. So there are oral formulations over here that actually work for women. A no oral formulation will ever work for a man because it's not strong enough. Not strong enough. Yeah. And the first and, pass. And, and remember, the testosterone orally formulated does have to pass through the liver. Yeah, exactly. Low dose concentrations that are effective for women, it can absolutely be taken orally. Mm -hmm. uh, they have lozenges, they have capsules. Um, but get, to get back to, you know, and we can, you know, cross sec this, but with men, the other delivery system is injections. And the problem with injections is, and by the way, there are, sadly, there are women taking injections and that's not the right thing to do. We can talk about that. But at the end of the day, um, you have to mimic the body's natural production of testosterone. If you really want to be successful with the exactly. injection protocol, mm -hmm. it has to be often and mm -hmm. it has to be usually, you know, relatively around the times that like testosterone is highest in the, in the, in, in the male and female body, which is usually in the morning. Yeah. You know, really, it's, it's somewhere between six and eight o'clock in the morning is like when usually when testosterone has a peak or a nadir, but the, but, but the, the truth is, is that, um, you have to inject every other day or daily. Yep. Now, most people are not going to inject daily because it just doesn't fit their, you know, life work balance or white life work life balance. But um, the the happy medium is every other day. When you inject once a week or twice a week, you cause a massive problem, and especially yep. over time, um, you just you damage the uh, HPGA axis, right? The hypogonadal axis, because when the hypogonadal axis doesn't see testosterone being, you know, pulsatively released like every day or every other day, which is what we do when we maximize shot therapy, it slows down everything because it's like dealing with a spike and then mm. a drop. Yeah, crazy. It's like a spike Makes and a cascade. A spike yeah. and a cascade, and yeah, yeah it's terrible for men. And some of them are on once every two weeks there. or once every six weeks. Some of the, 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 oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that insanity is endocrinologists talking about two shots a month. Yeah. They'll shoot, they'll give them a shot like on the first and the 15th or the 15th and 30th. It's insane. But, um, the truth is, is that the reality of this is, is that you don't, most men who have those protocols, you know, they've come to live in the world of like the first three days I feel good mm -hmm. and then I feel like shit. Or the next seven to ten, or whatever. But, but the truth is, is like I literally talked to a guy yesterday as a professional MMA, MMA fighter. Um, if you follow MMA, you know who this person is. Obviously, from confidentiality purposes, I'm not allowed to talk about him. But he's a pretty famous guy, and he was telling me that he literally feels like absolute dog shit. Yeah. And the reason he feels like dog shit is because he's been taking two shots a week. I mean, yeah, two shots every like seven to ten days. Well, wow. seven years. Yeah, and I was just like up, dude, down, up, down, up, down. Exactly. The body doesn't know what it's doing. Is, he, he was telling me that he has crushing brain fog. Yeah. And, you know, his levels, when you measure them, are not that bad, right? He's, again, one of those guys who's in the normal range. But I told him, I'm like, look, man, seven to 10 years, your system, your, your hypogonadal endocrine system is like used to, the, like you said, the up, down, up, down, up, down. So your brain is not functioning as well as it would is, and, and, and it's, and I told him, I'm like, very seriously and very truthfully, you can literally change without even increasing your dosage by going to everyday injections for the next two weeks. Wow. Watch what happens to you. And he was like, ah, oh, man, I don't know if I can inject myself every day. I'm like, you don't have to bro, but I'm just telling you, like, if you do, it's going to be night and day. It's like your brain, your oh, endocrine system will be rehooked up. Yep. It, it, it'll, you'll start working again. Everything will start working again. So, I mean, like I just had this talk with this guy two or three days ago, and I hope that he does it. I mean, I can only tell him what to do, but at the end of the day, this is what you see in a lot of men that are on therapeutic testosterone because they're just not, they're, they're not doing it at the frequency necessary to yep, optimize. Yeah, because we are like 24 hour circadian beings, you know, when, when it comes to light, 100%. when it comes to hormones, when it comes to sleep, when totally. it comes to food cycles, we need to put everything in that circadian balance. So Totally. Um, yeah, I think it, it's really important. And then you got the cipronate, the, the the you know, all the different types. What are the types? You know, like which one is the better type? And then say cipronate, whatever. What's, so that's a great what? question. And 
five years ago or seven years ago, six or seven years ago, I can't believe I've been doing this for so long. Now, it was like <laughs> six or seven years ago, we were in the debate of like what ester was better than another. Yeah. Was a faster, a faster half-life extra like propionate better than cypionate or anandate that had shorter half-lives. And then we really started looking into the pharmacology of testosterone and we realized, and this is all really in the last couple of years now, especially with the new oral formulations. And now they even have a, I mean, if I went through a mall, you would laugh, but they actually have a snort version. <laughs> and I forget what it's called, but it's this doctor in Miami. He's been on my podcast. He's a smart guy, but I don't agree with him. But um, it's again, it's the same thing. They get you from 180 to 290 and right. they rave so it shows about on it. the lamps. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, these guys are having work. nosebleeds and they still feel like shit. Mm. And you're like successful because you're testing them in the normal range. But at the end of the day, we now know that testosterone is testosterone. Right. So it doesn't matter what the ester is, what the half life is. The bottom line is get your testosterone in this in your bloodstream and do it as frequently as possible. Because right. the more frequent the administration the better the brain and the um, endocrine system and really all biological system functioning senses the natural aspect of it. So if you were injecting every single day with testosterone, and by the way, even for female, it's just somebody would have to compound the right dosage because normally women who inject are getting too much Yeah, because yeah, the formulation yeah, is too much, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I once had a cream, doctor tell me that he was trying to get a five milligram c per cc formulation, which would have been amazing for injections, because then you could have done like a half a cc every day as a female and get the perfect amount. But it, it, it's never been made. I'm sure there's yeah. probably underground, you know, yep. concoctions out there. But the bottom line is that no pharmacies or compound pharmacies are making it. But as long as uh, you're getting testosterone injected daily or every other day you're going to feel like you're getting like it's your body is pulsing natural testosterone at a high enough level to make you feel good. But again, I'm, like you said, the average endocrinologist in every country in the world is literally administering it twice a month. Mm -hmm. They have yep. no or idea even what worse. they're doing. Worse, even. Yeah, all their patients feel like absolute dog shit. Yeah, they all feel like I mean it's a reason. And then they blow um, up, and then they shrink, and then they blow up, and they shrink. I've seen that too. Lisa, you know, where they just put on five kilos and then lose five kilos. There, well, there is literally a yes. There's literally a website. I want you to look this up. Not right now, but look this up before you, um, you know, at some point in the next couple of days, so you can laugh. It's called testosteroneaddiction.com, and it's these people in the Midwest, the flyover country of the United States, <laughs> who have been literally butchered by quack doctors. Um, you know, one of the things we should mention that we didn't talk about is pellets. Pellets right. are the biggest scam okay. in the history of medicine because wow. a pellet is not bioidentical. In fact, there's, you know, it's the leading, it's the leading formulation in the world for doctors. And that is because they make the most money. Right. Wow. And they, they brainwash these people on saying, Oh, you know, you're afraid of injecting yourself. So just come into my office once every eight weeks and I'll, I'll implant it in the back of your ass or your hip or whatever it is. And it's a scam because, you know, and only the smartest people in, in testosterone optimization know this. There's never been a single randomized controlled study done with pellets. And the reason that is, is because science knows that pellets is an inefficient delivery system. They right. know it sucks. It will not cleave. People that are the butchers who are not trained surgeons are inserting these things in people's bodies. They don't even know what they're doing. I have a desktop folder, which I wish I could show you. I would love to share a screen um, of people who send me pictures of their extrusions, which oh. literally are failed insertions of pellets that are infected. Mm. They create abscesses. I mean, you cannot even believe how insane testosterone is. Okay, don't do that, guys. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, like they're cutting the back of their buttocks or their hip, or compared their to a little back. injection. And by the way, it hurts like shit. To and do some Q it. injection is nothing really. I mean, it's not too bad, you know. Come on. But I mean, can you imagine how crazy people are just at the thought of doing a pellet? Like, mm -mm. who would do that? It's medieval. <laughs> <laughs> the doctors aren't even trained in cutting your skin who are doing these things. And it's such a scam now. It's such a big high level business that they've literally, the pellet manufacturers have created these tools to get it in. to like pop you with a pellet. 
It still hurts. But I mean, it's, I mean, it's just insane. And then the other what thing a, is, and yeah, what you about the, they don't absorb right. They don't right. absorb right. So you have people who go on these things for one year and they're like, you know, cause I've had them come to me and they're like, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. And I'm like, okay, come to me in two years, come to me in a year and a <laughs> half. And every single one of them who's ever done it for longer than a year literally is like, holy shit, you're right. It stops working. Mm -hmm. Duh, the body is smarter than the pellet. You can't just insert a pellet into your skin and not think that at some point it's going to stop working. It, and it does. They all fail. Every single person who's ever done pellets, it eventually fails, you know? Yep. And then they show you their scars, right? Their surgical scars where they have all these <laughs> insertions. I mean, it's literally insane. So yes, yeah. subcutaneous injection is harmless. It's relatively painless. Some men, and and you know, tr un, you know, truthfully and uh, unfortunately, they get bumps. They yep. get bumps under the skin, right? Cellulitis, they call it whatever. But I mean, again, it's a small price to pay to feel a or million go times to the better cream. testosterone. Go to the scrotum cream, and yeah. And what about cream. your? But that's other... the thing is, a lot of people can't get it. Like no. just like you guys, they can't or get it. It's not the, the country doesn't enough. manufacture it. There's no compounding pharmacy that makes it. I mean, that's a big issue in Europe right now. Like, you know, they come to me and they're like, how can I get a doctor to script this for me? And like, they're now working, you know, a couple of the docs in the States are now working with like specific compounders, like overseas internationally, but it's a fortune yeah. to get it made in the yeah, States. Yeah, yeah. So your listeners know Everything. this in the States, it's 160 bucks for three months, 160 wow. bucks. So cheap. It's cheap. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, but internationally to get a cream for 90 days is probably like, 18, 17, 17, 1800 bucks. Oh, it's yeah, it's crazy. I mean, and, and over here, we, we're so stuck because that's the other thing I wanted to talk to you briefly on was uh, peptides. Uh, but before we leave the testosterone, what about the yeah. the the um, prostate hyperplasia, the cancer risk, the all of that sort of um, uh, stuff? What's your take on that? It's all nonsense. There's absolutely not a single clinical study that has ever been done, and there are thousands of clinical studies done that it's shown testosterone to cause any issues with the liver, any issues with the kidneys, any issues with the heart. In fact, we now know prostate, same thing. We now know the latest science shows us that it's actually a testosterone deficiency that causes prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So when you don't have any testosterone, you're likely to get prostate cancer. And then the same thing with the heart. Um, it's, uh, cardiovascular inefficiency or weak cardiovascular walls and cardiovascular architecture is caused by a lack of circulating testosterone, which again is simple to understand. You're going to have infl inflammatory diseases and diseases of aging when you don't have optimal levels of testosterone. So everything that they once previously thought about testosterone causing this, that, and the other is usually the opposite of it. Now, in fact, this is insane, but Testosterone, prostate cancer, stage four prostate cancer, they're using what they call bat super therapy. saturation doses yep. of testosterone. Yeah, yeah, bat therapy. I've heard about that. Apoptosis of the tumors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think I've about been, how insane uh, that is. I had a prostate cancer person that I was working with, and we were looking at it because, but it's only in America, with these high doses and then low, and then they they, they alternate yep. with this bat therapy. Uh, and yeah, it's still, it's still, they're still researching it. And the doctor that I was working with in America was, was, was really keen on it, but you That's know, awesome. we couldn't do it. You know, there was no way in hell any doctor here would touch it. Um, and so on, <laughs> but yeah. And, and the same with, uh, you know, when women, um, we, you know, talking about bioidentical hormone replacement for women or optimization, as you say, um, people go oh what about the cancer risk i can tell you like you 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 need to know your genetics my opinion you need to know how you're methylating you need to know that you need to get your body in a better shape so that you can cope with these things but not taking hormones is also a choice that leads down a road towards not so good you know bone density brain heart skin hair gut line you know all of these things are going to go south if you don't have enough of your estrogens and your progesterones and things so you you you're making a choice either way and uh, whether there's risks on on the one side or not, there's risks on both sides. Probably is the is the always answer. Always risk. I mean, there's, always, there's risk. always risk. I always tell people like, look, man, you're gonna get, you could get hit by a bus when you leave your house today. You know yep. what I mean? So it's like, it's like, what's more important, feeling optimal, or 
being in fear of feeling optimal and so not attempting, you know, taking the minimal risk or the minor risk. I mean, I mean, again, it, the, the risks of living the life that you and I live, the optimized life are so much less than people who don't, who just eat normal diets, don't exercise, That's you know, risky. don't get out in nature. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's always, it never balances. And, you know, the other thing is too, is like, you know, some people will say, well, financially, you know, I can't afford that. I can only afford my copay with my doctor. And I always tell people like, if you cannot, I don't care what your income level is, whether you make $50,000 a year or $50,000 a day, if you cannot afford to spend five to ten thousand dollars a year on your personal health care, it's because you're in you have your principles inverted. Because, and this is what's very important for people to understand is if and when, and again, most of these people have these events, when you have a massive incident like a yep, coronary heart attack, <laughs> it it causes medical bankruptcy. It does. Very, a lot of these and people I literally this. go broke. Yeah. They go broke. Yep. I was, I mean, I've seen it with, you know, rehabilitating my mum back from aneurysm and stroke and cancer. It's unreal. Literally, you know, cost me a house in the last two yes. years keeping her alive. Yes. You know, yes. literally. And, but that's and, what people don't understand is they're like, oh, if I have to take testosterone, but the side effects or whatever, yeah. it's like, you don't understand. You can't afford not to do these things because if it costs you a lot more. major medical illness, you're done. Yeah, you are financially done if you're trying to save your life at that end. And, and the funny thing is, or what I find bizarre is that people, even when they're faced with their own mortality, will still hang on to their bank account and their flash car instead of like prioritizing. And I'm like, man, sell the flash car, get rid of the house. You're dying. You've got to do something now. You know, and even I've had people, literally, I've had people come to me. This has happened at least five or six times in the last five years who were worth a lot of money and, you know, they pay me a lot of money to like give them a 60 to 90 day program. And I literally laugh in their face. I send them their money back, but I first tell them what they're, you know, to their face, like how long did it take you to get to $50 million to sell your company? Oh, all my life. And I'm like, okay, so and now you're a flaming dumpster fire with 35% body fat. And you think I can give you a 90 day program? Like, bro, <laughs> and don't, like Chop what out world my beer. are you living in? <laughs> but but that's but it's it's going back to what you're saying. It's like <laughs> these people spend so much time aggregating things, right? Building their business, becoming quote unquote successful as they define it, and completely take full total advantage of their physical vessel. They do nothing. They're yeah. slobs. They drink too much alcohol. They do no exercise, and it's like you know my wife coined this phrase probably 10 years ago and i use it to every sec second of my life now most people do not take care of their health until it's gone yep and then it's a hell of a lot road back well what and, can you do and I you mean, do you're not I mean, going to do anything yeah. you cannot tell in a morbidly obese person that they can lose 100 pounds or 80 pounds in a year now i know you and i both know that it has happened people do do it but there are supreme outliers yeah yeah, very yeah. small chance to do yeah. it. It's going to take a long time and you got to completely change your lifestyle. And as you know, most people won't change their lifestyle. It's And it's, you know, it takes, time. you got to do a lot of inner work and all of that sort of stuff. And, you know, like I've taken mum and it's knowledge, right? Like, because we, you know, like my mum, before she had the aneurysm and the stroke, she was 108 kilos at five foot three. You know, like she was, you know, way of a beast, but she was eating the, the pyramid. She, you know, the food pyramid, she was going to the gym, she was doing the thing, but she prioritized her kids. She was, everyone else is more important than me, you know, exactly. tough person. Now she's yeah. lost 50 something kilos. She's yeah, in awesome. my house now, she's on a keto diet. She's got all her supplements. She's sitting there eating her That's supplements awesome. right now, you know, and, but That's it's awesome. life strict, you know, like, but I have to go harder. The closer you are to the cliff, the, str the stronger you need to be with your foot on That's that right. break, right? So I have That's to right. go hard with you. And, and if you're a little bit younger, you can get away with more. But I think just, you know, having these conversations, optimizing yourself. Um, Jay, before we wrap up, I did want to touch on peptides because you're the peptide king as well. For sure. 
Um, you, uh, we, we struggle to get any peptides down here. My mission in life is to get one of them is to get peptides into New Zealand. You get a peptide company <laughs> in New Zealand. That would be yeah, amazing. Yeah. That's my, that's my dream because it's like, I mean, I, I get them for mom. I'm very creative and with the way I do things and, um, sure. but it's ex super expensive. It's risky. It's, you know, and you, one of the companies that you endorse, actually, they're, they're top notch. They're good. The um, oh, what's the name of them? Um, Limitless. 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 Yeah, because they they've actually said that they will send down here. So, but um, but I was going to ask you about that. What happens? Because I, you know, when I owned my company, which we sold, uh, I couldn't get anything into New Zealand. You know, we were, we were selling obviously uh, really? a peptide based hair product, oh. and then we had some face stuff. And every time we tried to send stuff to New Zealand, they would they would seize it at customs. Is it is it the same now, or is yeah, it? Yeah, I it mean, just... well, I managed to like I have a supplement company. I bring in uh, anti aging and longevity supplements from all around the world, nice. and and ninety percent of the time it gets through, um, and it's allowed. But there are certain things that are not allowed. You know, so if if, it, if it's on the list, you can't. Um, and one, yeah, we 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 can't get. Uh, peptides the only way i can get peptides is i you know working with a doctor here that will sign them out and do all of that which is a drama um and yeah. you know or yeah there, there's and you don't want to be buying them from black sites that you don't know what the heck they're about oh right? yeah no because, no 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 you can't do that yeah you got to no. be really really careful with these things so you're wanting the good stuff you want to know where to get them you want to know but the peptides are the future of well like the in america they're already the present although the fda is doing their best i think to shut things down yeah. <laughs> because they yes. like to do that don't they anything um, that works they anything that stop. works and could actually yeah. help people we can't yeah. have that uh we do exactly. have a couple of orally available ones like bpc 157 and tv yep. 500 or uh, the, the thomas and beta 4 fragment um, so I have those in my range because they're nice. okay, you know, but, but we can't get them generally, but I think things will change. So I've been educating people down here on Very different cool. ones. Yeah. What are your favorites? So give me your top five. Like if you were giving me five peptides that were top notch for different things, what would they be? And would they include yeah, so the I GLP mean, one I, agonist? Like yeah. I mean, one? so there's, I mean, it, it, it's a hard question to answer. There's so many of yeah, them. I mean, I, I would know. say, you know, usually child. like I say, well, what's your primary goal, right? So if it's fat loss, my five, my five best ones would be, uh, Ipamorelin, Tessamorelin, uh, obviously the GIP, GLP one agonist, like terzapatide, which, a lot, you know, a lot of people know as Manjaro mm -hmm. and then the mitochondrial stimulation or mitochondrial optimization supplements, like five amino, Mott one C, MQ. Yeah. you know, yeah. Obviously. So, I mean, there's, there's other stuff coming into the marketplace now soon, but um, it's, it's like you said, it's like, what can I get, you know, what can I access? Um, but basically again, you know, from a, that, that would be from a fat loss standpoint, from a healing standpoint, obviously there's TB 500, there's uh BPC 157. It's and alpha one is amazing. I, I don't go anywhere in the world without taking thymus and alpha one with me. Yeah. Uh, to, you, you can also use like LL 37, which is an extremely powerful, um, you know, antifungal, uh, antipathogenic, you know, an agent that you use when you get really, truly sick. And then there's also, um, you know, what's the one I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now, but the one you would use, um, VIP vasointestinal peptide, right? Uh -huh. So VIP is this profound peptide that helps for clearing sinus infections. Oh, wow. Slash COVID. Oh, right. Wow. So like you can actually inject VIP or even nasally, uh, you know, uh, inhale or slash snort, uh, VIP when you're, when you have COVID, I mean, are you, you know, these aren't things that, you know, they can say in medicine, but believe me, there are doctors out there that are using them with their COVID patients, especially end stage, you know, people that have really serious, um, sinus infections, you know, cognitively there's some, there's Selank, there's C-Max, um, there's Dihexa, Cerebroliacin. I mean, there's some amazing, um, cognitive or restoring peptides or enhancing peptides. I always tell people that you got to be cautious with cognitive peptides because you want to save them if you have brain illness, if you have a brain injury, uh, if you're, you know, your mom or your dad has early onset neurodegenerative disorder, like yeah. Alzheimer's, Lou yep. Gehrig's or any of those things, yeah, it's what know, we that's what you want to throw in cerebral eyes. In. But mm. a lot of people, unfortunately, you know, they're not smart. <laughs> 
and they want to take peptides to increase their brain power, right? And it's like, hey, you might get a little bit of a of a note of a uh, improvement, but it's nothing going to be, you know, nothing is going to improve your brain power rather than 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 uh, you know living insulin controlled and optimizing your hormones. Well, yeah, most insulin control, people, insulin. most people that have cognitive decline as they age have a testosterone deficiency. Wow. It's that simple. They're just, they don't have the brain power. They have brain fog. They feel like shit by two or three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm always like, get your testosterone levels looked at because yeah. all you have to do is optimize your testosterone. Your brain speed's going to increase. Um, DHT is also very um, in, in, in instrumental in cogn cognitive improvement. Um, for us, for people our age, you know, the anti aging peptides, the telomerase uh, expressing or enhancing peptides like epatalon, thymolin. Uh, the bioregulators, there's a couple other of the bioregulators too. Yeah, pinealon. Um, but those are great. Yep. Yep. You're not going to notice anything from taking them, right? But you will definitely improve your um, cell mitosis and just, you know, basically optimize for longevity. Again, increase uh, the production of telomerase uh, to extend your telomeres. Um, and then what else would I would I want to recommend? Um, yeah, actually, I've just had um, Bill Andrews. He's a telomere king uh, scientist on, on telomeres and you know, the telomerase activating things, things that's really interesting. Yeah. In the, yeah. In the, I mean, I mean, yeah. So what did I say? I said, anti-aging, healing, fat loss, um, um you know, uh, melanotan, melanotan, you know, that's, let's talk about one. melanotan. So melanotan one is my favorite peptide. Right. I mean, I use, I mean, my skin color, I was a white bread, Northern European dude. And I started using melanotan one in 2009 and my skin is dark now. You know, when people see me, especially my family, um, they're like, what did you do to yourself? You know, <laughs> did you like permanently tan? And I'm like, no, this is from using long-term low dose, micro doses of melanotan one. It absolutely darkens the skin pigment. Now, what people don't know, and they should know is that this also is a powerful protectant against UV burn and UV radiation damage. Wow. Because whenever you strengthen the melanin cortoid receptor complexes, you enhance the production of melanocytes. And the more mm -hmm. melanocytes that you have, the more protected you are from the elements, especially like, again, you know, uh, the, the UV burning of sun. So I can't really burn anymore. And I'm way darker than I used to be when I was, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. I stay pretty much relatively this level of tan year round. Um, and I use a microdose. I mean, I'm using like, you know, 20 micrograms, maybe twice a week. So with you don't melanotan. Now, the yeah. other thing, yeah. well, I've written about this is, and again, this is just anecdotal. And, you know, I have no studies to prove this, although I feel like I could if I really wanted to go down and dig deep. But it also enhances consciousness. So when you're taking a regular dose of melanotan one and you do inner work, meditation, contemplation, introspection, whatever, grounding in nature, you will feel way more connected on the morning that you inject melanotan, especially if you wow. do it pre whatever your inner work mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's been instrumental in my spiritual path and my spiritual foundations and my spiritual just acceleration because I was never this open and this connected when I was pre melanotan one but once i started using melanotan one and of course at the at the beginning i had no idea mm. but i really got into interesting side effect yeah, i really got into um you know seeking out alternative history historical timelines getting into esoteric studies i mean now that's my passion i mean what you and i are talking about is cool but if you really want to get me you know you start talking get you about, going what this isn't business. you on fire <laughs> You talk about densities <laughs> and quantum physics. I mean, I just did literally an wow. eight hour webinar the last two nights about talking about all this. We had a lot of people watching. So a lot of people are becoming attuned and in tune mm -hmm, to these mm -hmm. kind of stuff, but that's mm -hmm. really what my jam is now is talking about, you know, have uh, you worked out what's the on the other side? Realm. Yeah. Like where, where, you know, where are we going when we die? <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm trying to work out. <laughs> You got an answer for me. <laughs> well, physically, physically, your body dies, but your soul is energy and your energy cannot die. Right. The laws of thermodynamics prove that energy cannot be contracted. It cannot. It, it just can constantly ever expands. So if we're energy beings in physical bodies, then my guess is that, you know, it's really not a guess, but it's like, you know, we're we're continuing our, our evolution or our journey. And whether or not we come back as a human again, I think is an option. I think you can probably come back in different ways, but the energy of you and, you know, Jay 
And Lisa is permanent. It's infinite. It's ever expanding. Uh, so it's just like how we look at like how we define it, but we're, we're so much more than these bodies. Yeah. You these, know what I mean? Yeah. But we can keep these bodies in good shape as best we can while we're here, right? So that we can <laughs> stick around a little bit longer and look after our loved ones. Jay, you've been absolutely fabulous today. I really, you know, you're so much fun to listen to and, and so full of beans, you know, like <laughs> so full of energy and just uh, positivity. So really thank you for all the work you do. Really excited to have connected with you. And I can't wait to maybe meet you if you come down here and you're promoting uh, Kalo Curb, which is actually something we should w briefly talk about because that's a product we can get here in New yeah, Zealand. Yeah, we definitely can. And I will, yeah. we will meet. And I, like I was telling yeah. you off air before the show that I'm definitely working on coming over there uh, at some point, probably this year, if not this year, like early next year, but sometime, yeah. I, I would assume this year. Well, That's I'm trying guess. to work on a, um, my, my dream is to get a longevity conference down here and maybe you can come and speak at that. I haven't that got it amazing. underway yeah, I mean, yet. If you do that, I'll come for <laughs> sure. I'll be your first person. Just make sure you invite me first. <laughs> oh, it sounds good, Jay. Well, thank you so much, Jay Campbell. You've been absolutely fabulous. Where can people find you? Uh, there's a peptide cheat sheet that everyone has to go download if you're into peptides go and get that yeah for Park, sure well so the off. easiest way so i have a, a website that we we built for when i go on podcasts it's literally jcampbell.com forward slash free books and they can mm -hmm. get access to all of my previous books with the exception of the last two but we do give the first two chapters of wow. the peptides optimize your health with peptides and then the newest book which is 30 days to shreds uh which is definitely a masterpiece on fat loss using the latest and greatest tools yeah. and gadgets like and GLP one cool. agonist. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Cool. So, I mean, so cool. yes, yeah, so it's all there for free, but it's jcampbell.com forward slash free books. And then they can find me on social media at jcampbell333. And people ask, what is 333? 333 is the angel number, which is the connection between master teachers in spirit wow. and us in mind, body, soul. Ah, uh, beautiful, beautiful, Jay Campbell333. <laughs> That's absolutely wonderful. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Felisa. Appreciate coming on.